Hello, welcome back. Now that you've spent a lot of time working with your order of operations, we're ready to put that knowledge to work evaluating formulas. Have you got your guided student notes ready? All right, let's begin. A formula, so that's the word that goes here, describes a procedure for finding the value of a particular quantity. So for example, if I asked you about the circumference of a circle, you might tell me that it's the distance around a circle, but to calculate it, we would use the formula pi times the diameter. To calculate the volume of a cube, we would need the side length, and then we would raise it to the third power. So we would cube the side length. So these are formulas. It just tells you what to do to get the value that you want. If we're going to evaluate a formula, we need to know what numbers belong in the variable spots. So we need values for all the variables on the side that has all the mathematical operations. We say that this is substituting. Pretty similar to what happens in sports. If you are going to substitute someone for the quarterback position, you take out a quarterback and you put in a quarterback. So you have to put in things that have equivalent values. The formula for finding the perimeter of a rectangle? Well, let's see. We already know about the perimeter of a rectangle. Perimeter means add up all the sides. All right, we want to go around the rectangle. We have a length here, a width, another length, and another width. It's pretty easy to see that we need two of these lengths, two of these widths, and we're going to end up adding everything together. Some people like to remember this formula. It's pretty common. A lot of people remember it. Other people just know it because they know what the word perimeter means. So if you're one of those formula people, stick this on your list of formulas that you should know. What we want to do is evaluate this formula when the length is 83 meters and the width is 7.4 meters. Start with our formula. P is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. We want to take the L out, so it'll leave a big gaping hole in our formula. Use parentheses here to show this, and then replace the L with its value, which is 83. The parentheses are important here because they remind us that we need to multiply the 83 by the 2. If we didn't put them in, we might think that this was just 283, which is clearly not what we want. Parentheses are especially important when we start working with negative numbers. We don't want to end up subtracting when we want meant to multiply. Take the W out, leave a big gaping hole with parentheses, put the 7.4 in where the W was. And now we're ready to calculate. You'll remember when we were working with the order of operations, we did everything one step at a time just so that we could get really, really familiar with what the order was. And I said back then that there were some shortcuts that we could take and that I would tell you about those. And maybe you didn't believe me, but I'm going to tell you about them. When we look at this, we have 2 times 83 plus 2 times 7.4. We know that multiplications are done before additions. So we can just go through and look at all of our multiplications. 2 times 83 is 166. 2 times 7.4 is 14.8. Now we can add. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't had much coffee yet today. And my calculators are right here. So 166 plus 14.8. If you did this without the aid of a calculator, that's fabulous. Normally I would do it that way too. All right, 180.8. 180.8 what? Well, we have a couple of choices. Of course, not all of them are right. We see that meters are being used here. Should the perimeter be in meters or should it be in square meters? Well, square meters 
measure area that would be filling up this space. We didn't do that. We went around. You could take a piece of string and go around a figure and then say, how long is this string? And this particular string would be 180.8 meters long. So meters are the correct units here. One, because they make sense. Two, because it happens with the math. We had 2 times 83 meters gave us 166 meters. 2 times 7.4 meters gave us 14.8 meters. Meters plus meters gives us more meters. All right, let's try another one. You don't have to remember these other formulas. Some of them are a little involved, like this one. What's important is that we know how to use them. So this is the formula that calculates a total resistance if two resistors are connected in parallel. So R sub T talks about the total resistance. Our first resistor has a resistance of 10 ohms and the second resistor has a resistance of 6 ohms. We want to be really careful to fill in everything where it belongs. So we are calculating total resistance. R sub 1 is 10. R sub 1 and R sub 2 are written right next to each other, so we know they're being multiplied. In the denominator, we have another 10, but this time it's being added to the second resistance. All right, if we were back in the last lesson working on the order of operations step by step, we would point out that the numerator is being held together with invisible parentheses, the denominator is being held together with invisible parentheses, and that we need to figure out the value of the numerator and the value of the denominator before we can perform this division. So let's do that. The value of the numerator, 10 times 6, is 60. The value of the denominator, 10 plus 6, is 16. And then we can divide. 60 divided by 16 is equal to 3.75. 3.75, well this is resistance, so the units should be ohms. What I want to point out is that order of operations is really important to correctly doing what needs to be done. If we had started here and just used our calculator to do this whole thing and said 10, times 6 divided by 10 plus 6. It would look good, but it wouldn't give us what we wanted. The answer is not 12. And the reason, of course, that it's not 12 is because of those invisible parentheses. Right? We haven't held this denominator together. So if you want to do this all at once, use those invisible parentheses in your calculator. Hold the whole numerator together, hold the entire denominator together. Right? Numerator in parentheses divided by denominator in parentheses. And then we get the 3.75 ohms that we should have. Okay, new example. We have a formula that calculates power if we know the current and the resistance. So our job is to evaluate this formula where I equals 58 amps and R is equal to 7 ohms. All right, power is equal to 7. The R is next to the I, so we know things are being multiplied, times 58, and the 58 is being squared. Order of operations says exponents are evaluated before multiplications. So, oh gosh, I don't know 58 squared. Let's try. 58 and our squared button. Whoops, that's not right. I could delete this and do it again, but I don't want to. I want to show you how to edit things. And so we can use this back arrow key and type an 8 where the 5 was. Come back out of our expression and now try.
There we go. 58 squared is 3,364. And now we can multiply by 7. And you'll notice I didn't type in the 3,364 again. I just said times 7, and it used my previous answer automatically. So we have 23,548, and those are watts. All right, so this is a case where your calculator can probably do a better job than you can by hand. By hand, we might forget about the order of operations and multiply 7 times 58 and then square the result. But that's not, of course, what's happening. We need 7 times 58. Ah, I did it again. 58. And the 58 is being squared. There we go. And so you notice it looks on the calculator the same way it looks on your paper. OK, one more. This one looks horrible. That's okay. It's just a big formula. It's nothing that we can't handle. So this formula talks about the length of a belt we need to go around two pulleys. I think a diagram is in order here. Here's a pulley. It's a bigger pulley. It has a diameter, capital D. There's the center of the pulley. Here's a smaller pulley. It has a diameter of little d, and there's its center. The distance between these two centers is called c. And then the belt goes like this. Well, maybe not that sloppily, but you get the idea. So it's the length of that red line that this formula is calculating. Let's fill in what we know. L is equal to 2 times C, and C is 24. Remember, hold that value in parentheses so we remember that we are multiplying. Plus pi, capital D is 16, little d is 4. Denominator of this fraction is 2. Plus the numerator of the next fraction is 16 plus 4. And the denominator is 4 times the 24, 4 times c. All right, so let's see what we can do. We don't have any exponents. We do have some parentheses, right? We have parentheses that are holding this numerator together, parentheses holding this numerator together, parentheses holding that denominator together, some inner parentheses over here. It's probably not a bad idea to go through and clean this up. L is equal to 2 times 24 plus this numerator 16 plus 4 is 20. So we have pi times 20 all divided by 2 plus this numerator is 20 and the denominator over here 4 times 24 is 96. So we took care of our parentheses all at once, or at least the inner ones. When we look at this now, we are seeing some multiplications and some additions and some divisions. 2 times 24 will be done before the addition. Pi times 20 divided by 2 will all get done in order, plus and then 20 divided by 96. So all of the multiplications and divisions will be done before the additions. I need a little more space. So L is equal to 2 times 24 is 48 plus, well, let's see, pi times 20 divided by 2. We know pi is going to give us a lot of decimal places, so we may as well just go ahead and use our calculator here, pi times 20 divided by 2. See what that is. Oh, yeah, 10 pi, of course. It's not what we want. Give us the decimal. So we use this toggle key here. 31.4159, bunch of stuff. 
31.4159 stuff 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 plus 20 divided by 96 oops let's see I did that wrong calculator errors happen all the time that's why it's important to have a sense of what your answer should look like and always double check what you're doing 20 divided by 96 yeah that's a big long decimal also 0 0.208333 stuff 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 all right so we could try to write it all down like this and then add but then we'd have to be writing and re-entering and typing and trying not to make mistakes and it's it's well it's just really a good chance for us to make a mistake so what we're going to do here is use our order of operations brain together with our calculator brain and focus right here this is cleaned up pretty well and then we know that our calculator can handle things like this it can handle things like what we originally started with too but we have to do some work to put it in properly here there's not so much work to do because it's just multiplications and divisions and additions so let's see what we get ready here we go 2 times 24 close the parentheses plus pi times 20 right that's the numerator divided by the denominator is 2 plus 20 divided by 96 and here we go there that looks better where shall we round well later on we'll talk about how to determine exactly which decimal place is appropriate for today let's round to the nearest tenth so we see that there is a six in the tenths place the two is right next to it says that the six will stay the same and we will say that this length is about 79.6 hmm point six what gosh I've forgotten what we were even using let's come back to our problem a little bit see what we started off with all of these distances were given in inches and we want the length of the belt so it makes sense that we have inches here as well inches plus inches plus more inches will give us inches okay and that's pretty much it for formulas combine your knowledge of order of operations with your knowledge of the calculator good luck take care bye bye